is, this is Resurrection Day. And Lord, we celebrate it. We give you glory and honor for coming out of that grave, Lord, and uh, sealing forever, Lord, uh, our destiny in heaven. Death will no longer hold us. So thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you uh, guide me as I teach this. this. I pray, Lord, that it please you. And Lord, uh, um, if it pleases you, it'll please others. So, Father God, I pray that you take it, take this word, magnify your name to it. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Revelation 12. And just to review, we were talking about Satan getting kicked out of heaven. War in heaven kicked out of heaven, and he was in on earth. Him and every demon in the universe is loose on earth. Uh, need to remind you, you know what we we <clears throat> we start out Revelation to three chapters one, two, three. The letters to the seven churches, chapter 4, the scene shifts to heaven. And then chapter 5, 6, and 7 uh, were, uh, excuse me, I better make sure I'm in the right pew. Starting with chapter uh, 5, we talked about the... Uh, started talking about the seven seals. The book was seven seals, and we... And then chapter 6, the first seal, and second, third, fourth, up to the sixth seal. And then you had in chapter 7, they had a pause before the breaking of the seventh seal. And that pause was in order for the 144,000 to be sealed in there forward where they could forward, where they could go out and evangelize the world. And then uh, chapter 8, the seventh seal, the trumpet, and the trumpets blowed, and we had uh, the first trumpet blew, and the botanical judgment, a third of the trees were burned up, and the, the second trumpet sounded, and the marine life, a third of the marine, the animals in the ocean and were destroyed, and a third of the ships, and then we went on to the third angel, and the fresh water where the Meteors, stars fell, wormwood, one of them named wormwood, and it poisoned all a third of the fresh water. And then we had the fifth, fourth seal, the weather judgment when the sun darkened and it changed the climate, had climate change, real climate change. You know, and that's a, a, a the thing, you know, I believe in climate change, but God's going to do it. I don't care, they can, they can fire up another few million cars in California and blame it on uh, man, but that still, God says he's going to destroy the world by fire, and he's starting right now to heat the thing up. So, uh, <clears throat> weather, all right, I'm going on, i got to go quick, because I'm just reviewing. Fifth trumpet, the bottomless pit is open, and the, the demonic locusts come forth to torment men for five months. And then in the sixth trumpet, the army from the east, the 200 million uh, demonic army was released from the river Euphrates and they were to kill one third of humanity. And then uh, the tent, chapter 10, we see the angel with the little book and John is getting told at the end of the sixth trumpet, he's told, so you got to prophesy some more. And he has to eat the little book, you know, and then it... Uh, it's sweet to his taste, but it's bitter to his belly. He said it, it's sweet that he knows revenge is coming, but it's bitter when he sees what is in store and what's coming forth. And then the two witnesses. The two witnesses and all of this is in the, uh, <clears throat> the 11th. And I said all of this preceding him and come up to the seventh trumpet in chapter 11 about Christ's reign foreseen. And all of this is, remember I said this, and I have to remind you because I've got to remind myself. Uh, this is from God's point of view, from the heavenly point of view. 
the first, those verses, uh, those chapters, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, well, five through eleven. All right, now we started with chapter twelve, the viewpoint, a satanic viewpoint. What's happening on earth? What's happening on earth? And actually, we're covering the same period of time from a different viewpoint, from a viewpoint of uh, Satan's viewpoint or the worldly viewpoint. So with that, Satan's cast out of heaven, and he's on earth. And all the demons and all the universe have cast, been cast down, and they're on earth too. All right, and the woman. Last week I talked about the woman. She was uh, being tormented. He didn't have anybody to accuse in heaven, and he couldn't stand before God and, you know, just try to uh, make God look bad. That's exactly what he he had an audience there standing before God to accuse the brethren as they came in. And now he doesn't have one, so he's enraged. And so uh, he is uh, <clears throat> cast out. So let's go to um, the second attack. Comes against the... Uh, I've got to find... I might be in the wrong... I'm, I'm got, there's my... I needed that last week. Uh, all right. I knew, I knew I was on the wrong page. Uh, I kept looking for my notes. Uh, Satan's first attack. Remember, uh, he's against the whole. He's attacking the, uh, through the Antichrist, he's attacking the children of Israel in Jerusalem and all around. He's attacking them. And they, they're they told, <coughs> remember in, in uh, Matthew 24, where Jesus is giving uh, the Olivet discourse, they call it. <coughs> and he's saying, if you're on the rooftop and you see the abomination of desolation there, you don't go down and try to get your stuff. He just says, Kate. But that means don't pack it. He said, you run. Run right now. You flee. If you're in the, <clears throat> if you're in the field, don't go back to the house. You run. You go. And this is what he's, uh, he's talking about. And when you look at this, and uh, I wanted to, to mention this today. And uh, there's a, a group of the Israelites that escaped. And this is going to end up being the remnant. It's going to be the the remnant when all of Israel saved because only this group's going to make it through. The rest of them are going to be annihilated. So let's turn to Daniel 11. And I want to speak a little about this before I go on to the second attack. Where are they going? Is they escape, and how do they escape? Turn to Daniel 11, 40. And we'll start with that, 1140. And I'm going to... All right, starts out, verse 40. At the end time, I guess that tells us that we're in the right pew here in Daniel. So this is the end time. At the end time, the king of the south will collide with him. Him being the Antichrist. I'm going to tell you some of these pronouns in here. And the king in the north will storm against him, the Antichrist, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he will enter countries, overflow them. He being the Antichrist will enter countries and overflow them and pass through. He, the Antichrist, uh, will also enter the beautiful land, Israel. And many countries will fall, but this will be, but these will be rescued out of his hand. These, Edom, Moab, and the foremost of the sons of Ammon. This is where the great eagle carries them to. These three countries are where they flee to. Where is the Edom, Moab, and all there on the, the east and southeast 
of the Dead Sea, uh, 100, 112 miles on Google Earth. As I measure, that's where Moab's at. And Moab is where Petra, I've mentioned that, Petra, where it's carved out of sandstone. And if you saw, what is it, uh, the Last Crusade, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you saw this big carved thing, uh, cathedral looking, that's in, that's a real place. It's in Petra. It was carved out, it was a, a old monastery or something, it was carved, it looked like a, a facade of a real temple or something. Well, this is where it's a narrow way in, and some say that may be this where they'll, the Jews will flee to, this Petra, because that's in Moab. All right. With that, verse 42 says, Then he, the Antichrist, will stretch out his hand against other countries, and the land of Egypt will not escape, but he will gain con control over the hidden treasures of gold, silver, and over the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and Ethiopians will follow his heels. But rumors from the east are coming, and he will go forth, with great wrath to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his tent of his royal pavilion between the seas and the beautiful uh, and the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will, all right, where's that? Between the seas. Between the seas, he's going to be the Sea of Galilee or the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean, talking about Jerusalem. That's where he's going to pitch his tent. All right? <clears throat> yet he will, yet he will come to an end, and no one will help him. All right, I got to say this, and the reason I'm saying this is is because we look and say, how do they escape when the when the when the devil and all his demons are cast down, and they are loose, and the Antichrist is under satanic control. He's a human, but things we got to remember. Satan is not omnipresent, he's not omniscient, and he is not omnipotent. All he knows is what he gets from his lieutenants, his, his demon in the hierarchy of demonic forces. So that's why, and I said this, I, I mentioned, I don't know where, it may have been prayer meeting. Satan was a rebel, and he got others to rebel. And there's always somebody that says, I can do a better job than Satan. I'm going to rebel against him. I wonder why these people, why the army from the north came against Santa Christ. I only thing I can say is this demon force behind him that said, told the humans, hey, you can go against the forces of old the Antichrist here, and you'll be boss. Well, he annihilates them, he annihilates the army from the south. And finally he gets everything set up in Jerusalem and he hears worm, rumors coming from there. During all this chaos where he is, the Antichrist is busy fighting the army from the north, fighting the army from the left, but when his original purpose was to destroy all of the Jews, well, they escaped during all of that chaos when he, he's got to take care of other business. So they get to escape. Now that's just me. I don't know. That's just the way I I would think of that. And the and the, the great wings of the eagle is just a supernatural uh, event. And it's an event sometimes when it looks like natural occurrences or things happening uh, at the right timing become a miracle of deliverance. Isn't that not? Can God not work that away? I think He does. I think He worked that away last, you know, I won't say that, November or something like that, a year or two ago, worked that away. Just uh, right circumstances, right time occur, and then people blame everything else. All right, with that, all right, He's, he's thwarted. They escaped. A remnant escaped from Jerusalem and escaped from Israel. They fled when they were told to flee, and they 
went to Moab or Edom or Ammon, one of those places. All right. With that, uh, the second attack. Let's look in verses 15 through 16. Revelation thing. 15 through 16. And the serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, so that he might cause her to be swept away with the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon poured forth out of his mouth. All right. The serpent, and this is a symbolic language here, the serpent, that's Satan. So MacArthur says it's probably symbolic too that this is a real river. And it's a real, he, uh, <clears throat> some verses that support that the imagery of flood symbolize uh, t- trouble in general. If we'll look to Psalm 69, 1, two, one and 2. Psalm 69, 1 and 2. We see, save me, O God, for the waters have threatened my life. I I have sunk in a deep mire, and there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, and a flood overflows me. There's this <clears throat> trouble, general trouble. Look at 13 and 14 of the same chapter. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the greatness of your loving kindness, answer me with your tr- your saving truth. Deliver me from the mire, and do not let me sink. May I be delivered from my foes and from the deep waters. Let's get another example. Turn, turn also to Jeremiah forty-seven two, and let's look at that. Jeremiah 47, 2 says, Thus says the Lord, Behold, waters are going to rise from the north and become an overflowing torrent and overflow the land in all its fullness, the city and those who live in it. And the men <clears throat> will cry out and every inhabitant of the land will wail. And that torrent, and what he's referring to there, that, that flood from the north or overflowing the land is Babylon. At that time, that's Babylon coming in just like a flood, but it's it's the armies. It is a vast army. It's just like a they seep into everything. You can't escape. All right. <clears throat> There's several other verses I gave. I could give you there. You got Second Samuel twenty two seventeen. You got Psalms one forty four seven. Oh. Daniel eleven twenty six, but there's a thing about floods, and this is a good verse to remember. I didn't memorize, and I thought I had it. And I'll see if I have. So shall they fear the Lord from the setting sun, and His glory from the rising sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Always. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And it appears the standard here is supernatural event. The earth opened up and swallowed the flood, took it in. And we we look at this and I, I said earthquakes. There's eight references in the concordance in Revelation to earthquakes. I think uh, five of them are for different earthquakes. And maybe some of them are talking about the same period of time and all. But this is a time when uh, earthquakes and just havoc is going on all over the place. And, it's, uh, and you remember Jesus said in the, during those days there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. It's just going to be chaotic. And there's going to be earthquakes. Let's look look back for a moment to uh, Revelation uh, mm, I'm not being in. Yeah, let's look to six Revelation six and see. Uh, one thing that I mentioned in teaching on chapter six.
Look at chapter, look at verse 14 in chapter 6. And it's talking about the sixth seal has been broken. And there's terror, and there's a third of the a third of the inhabitants of the earth is are killed. But look. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. This is on a scale, this is continental drift magnified and done in seconds. You know, you went to your your um, physical science classes and you learned about continental drift, you know, and you learned how Africa and South America fit together and all that, because I taught it. And there's a mid-Atlantic ridge that's just bubbling up with lava and it's pushing the continents further apart. And the North American continent is coming up against the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Well, here's what's happening. This happens instantaneously. The whole earth, the rocky part of the earth, in K is it's solid, and then you got a little discontinuity. They got it, some Polish man, a scientist, Mohu Rivetic, discontinuity, he called it. How's about that? Well, the thing slides. It slips like an onion skin around on, on it. When these earthquakes happen, they're not, not, this is not just the San Francisco earthquake. This is, this is a magnitude that's off the scale. And so the places it says here are moved. These mountains and islands are moved out of their place. They are no longer on 38 degrees north latitude and whatever degrees east longitude. They're not there anymore. They have moved significantly. So this is why when it says the earth opened up, <laughs> yeah, just like in the Old Testament when I think it was Dathan was rebelling against Moses, you know, and Moses said, Lord, just do something different. If if what I'm doing and what he's doing is okay, it's of you and all, don't cause him to die a natural death. Make something different. So what happens just right after that prayer? The, ocean, the earth splits. Dathan and all of his allies and his families and everything were covered over. So this is what this is happening here. With the second attack, Satan is being thwarted again. He brought out his armies, and like a flood, he consumed all of the remnant. And the earth helped them and opened up to consume the army. Well, he's in a rage now. Satan's in a terrible rage. I, I, I want to ask y'all something. Just I was studying this and I got to think about it. And y'all just tell me. The angels and demons have souls. What? No, you don't. Bless. What's a soul then? I've always heard it was psychotomy. Mind, will, and emotion. Is that right? Is is. Has anybody got a different definition of a soul? All right, if it's a mind, will, and emotion. Has Satan got a mind? Can he scheme? Can he think? Of course. Has he got a will? Yeah, whatever God says I want, says no, I don't. His will is to do bad and evil. Is he emotional? And that's where I got this. He is in a, a rage that won't let go. His emotions, his spiritual, and he's a spirit. And think about it. The rage that he's going to display is going to be worked out through humans. So you got to understand the worst thing that you can imagine that somebody could do right now, magnify that millions of times when the demons are loose on lost humanity. Magnify it. Just magnify it. The worst, most horrendous uh, human act against another human is magnified and they're going to enjoy doing it if they can enjoy anything in that time. But that's, uh, 
That's what's happening. And that kind of, this is the kind of rage that's going to be broke, broken forth, break forth, good English, Barry, on the Jews, the remaining Jews. So, let's look at verse 17 and kind of end up here. Verse 17. So the dragon, he sorted his armies. His ocean or his flood was consumed in an earthquake. So the dragon was enraged. That is his emotion. With the woman. With Israel. And went off to make war with the rest of her children or who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. All right. This, uh, the rest of the woman, it's been debated what uh, and who this is, the rest of the woman. Some of them say it's 144,000 evangelists. They couldn't be touched. Some say it is the Gentile uh, and Jewish tribulation saints, the ones that are born again, and they, are, they weren't Jews. They weren't chased out of Jerusalem or those places to escape to Moab. They were still out there somewhere. And now he's going out to look for them. All the Christians, all the tribulation saints that are Gentiles, all that are Jews, the 144,000, he's after them. Uh, let's look. Two things. The 144,000, you know, we appear back in uh, Revelation 7, 2 through 8, where, they're, where the, the angels, they're holding, the four angels are holding back the wind. And he said, you hold them back, don't let nothing happen. This is in the interlude at the, at the end of the sixth trumpet and before the seventh trumpet. He said, you hold it back. The angel holds them back. And they seal all the 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, to go out and preach the gospel throughout the whole world. Well, that's in 7, verses 2 through 8. Revelation 14, 1 and 3, 1, 2, 3, says this. Then I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on, the, on Mount Zion. This is at, at the third, the seventh, trumpet before the seven bowls of, the, of wrath is going to be released. And the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his father written on their forage. And that happened, that was sealed back there in chapter 7. It seems to appear we don't, I don't know, I put a question mark, it said are, are they is it a vision, a resurrected, or did they make it, have they made it through to this point? Are the 144,000, have they made it to this point to appear with Jesus on Mount Zion? I don't know. I hadn't studied enough to know that. So if y'all get an answer, y'all ask Jeff or Dina or Patrick. So I, I don't know. So that could be, but MacArthur claims he said it appears that it's anybody it's Jew or Gentile it's uh, it's whoever's born again because he's talking <clears throat> he mentions they hold to the testimony of Jesus which means it doesn't mean like uh, they overcame him by the blood and the word of the testimony it don't mean like your own testimony it means like what God, what Jesus said while he was on the earth what he preached, what everything he said, that's what Jesus, they hold to that testimony. That, am I making sense? One thing say, yeah, I believe Jesus Christ because he, he came when I repented and I believed, you know, he came into my life and I'm different now. And this is my testimony. I'm, and that's my, but this means what Jesus said. They hold and they preach and they teach that. That's testimony. All right. Now, with the sounding of the seventh, the seventh trumpet, this attack is going to stop. This attack, the seventh trumpet, 
remember, is not a judgment in itself. It is the contained seven judgments. The bold judgments are yet to be revealed. We've been talking about the first three and a half years of uh, the tribulation. The last three and a half years is called technically the great tribulation or Jacob's trouble and all. That, that's when re the Antichrist is revealed. This is him. He's there. He stood in the temple and he said, no more animal sacrifices, you Jews. I'm God, you worship me. And so he stops the animal sacrifices and we're talking about what's going on here. And the seventh trumpet uh, really is toward the end. It's the end of the three and a half years. It's, it's closer because these things in the bold judgments happen one right after another. So it can't, it can't be three and a half years. Really, it's, it, Satan is a, is indwelling the Antichrist and all this stuff's going on for three and a half, maybe two and a half years, maybe three years in the last six months, all of the bold judgment starts going. So, I hope I've cleared up some things and caused you to go back and remember where we come from up to this point. Okay. And uh, with that, let's look at 1115. I have no idea why I said put I said 1115 on here, but we'll find out maybe. 1115. That's the seventh angel. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. I think you will see, if I am right, you will see this referred back to Revelation 8 too. So you're seeing what I was talking about. One's a viewpoint from heaven. And others of you point from earth or, or satanic viewpoint. All right. So eight to the seventh seal and the trumpet. And don't no matter. Okay. I don't know why I put it there. Right, the, uh, the worst is yet to come for the elect and the remnant of Israel. When you look at this and you look at 12, 17, to make war on the children and keep the commandments, to keep the commandments of God and hold to their testimony of Jesus, hold to the testimony of Jesus. The worst is yet to come for those that are still on earth alive. Because the, the seventh trumpet has the seven bowls, and they go, it's going to get worse right quick. So everybody that remains alive, and they come through this. God's going to bring his elect through this. And, you know, if, they, if they're made named to come through the, the tribulation alive, they come through alive. All right. And what will happen? At the very end here, what we're going to see is all Israel is going to be saved. Just like Romans says, Romans 11, they go, all Israel will be saved. And uh, that's why the remnant, that's why the escape was provided to go to Moab or, or Edom and all. All Israel. Now, we look at it, you know, and we, we get thinking, we think too much about today. We never do project our thoughts into the future. We say, oh, Israel. It's, uh, there's 14 million Jews in Israel, and, and we get saying, no, they're going to be a, <laughs> when a third of the population is destroyed, everything's decimated. It, it, life on earth is not like we know it, and it won't, and it's not going to be that way. And we need to quit thinking it's going to be a political solution, because there ain't no political solution. To what's going on here, and you might as well get over it. It's, uh, I hate to say that, but that's, I see people, well, what's the Bible say? 
They'll be marrying and giving in marriage and all. I don't think we ought to quit doing that, but I for sure could think we ought to. If I was a Jew and I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you what I'd be doing. I'd be I'd be hoarding some survivalist food in Moab or someplace down there. And who knows? The Holy Spirit of God can provide and and motivate and move people to do just that kind of that stuff. But I'm not gonna move it because I'm I'm one of these survivalist nuts. But you know, I can I just uh this this thing I have to go back. I'm sorry if I bore y'all sometimes at going back and review, but I have to get it straight in my head. Because it's so uh and I've tried to stay away. I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just teach Revelation. You can't teach Revelation without getting into Daniel and Ezekiel. You can't. Impossible. And uh, Zechariah, too, and a few others. So, with that, I am. Got to still got 10 minutes. Y'all got any questions, I'll answer them. I've got to make this announcement. I am not going to be here next Saturday. I got to sub next <laughs> Sunday. I may not be here Saturday either. Uh, next Sunday, Jeff's going to be teaching. Jeff's going to be opening up about the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. So Jeff will be doing it next Sunday in his. Uh, if he leaves me a good quitting uh, stopping part, I'll try to take up there. If not, I'll let him go on another month. Be done. I'll get a rest. But Jeff will be doing it next. So y'all make sure you're here. Because I'm not going to be here. i got to go here as a preacher. All right. Question? Nothing. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you make it a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us to prepare our souls first to face you. And then, Lord, prepare our souls to look around the loved ones, the family that are lost, that aren't prepared to meet you, that aren't even they're not prepared for the terrible times to come if the revelations and the, and the rapture would catch them unaware and left behind. Lord Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, move in the lives of the lost ones who will be in this church today. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.